Hey guys, my name is Ravi Sharma and I am the founder and buyer's agent at Search Property. Welcome back to Search Property TV. We've changed up the environment a little bit. No whiteboard. Uh, I've been getting a few comments saying that my handwriting is uh, impeccable. <laughs> uh, so I thought I'd do something a little different and I'd love your feedback in terms of how you consume this uh, content versus you know, me doing it on the whiteboard. So today's video is really about a conversation with how people have access or early access to the super that they have. Um, so a lot of comments, a lot of people talking about in Facebook groups how if you take out $10,000 or $20,000 out of your super amid this you know, virus at the moment, you're actually gonna lose out on you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I thought, you know what, why not create a fun video uh, just looking at the comparison and if you're someone that's been adversely affected by the virus and you can actually access your super, don't get scared with what people are saying about what exactly happens if you take it out and you're actually losing hundreds of thousands. We're actually gonna put it to the test. Um, so I've got some graphics uh, instead of my writing. And so if you guys do enjoy that, then definitely leave me a thumbs up and comment down below. And obviously subscribe because we've got some really good content um, coming out every week and I don't want you to miss out. So I'm gonna put up this, uh, which is option one taking your super that's already there and leaving it in there for 20 years. That really gets, you know, the average of 9.5% uh, as, as a growth, as an average in your super already based on how it's invested. Now we can see with the initial deposit being $20,000 and there's no regular deposits, we get a total interest earned of $102,832. And that means your total super balance after 20 years, just on the $20,000, would be $122,832. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that on average, we've seen the super markets, um, you know, how it's invested into shares, that market grows at an average of 9.5%. Now, not no growth is linear, uh, so they do have years of you know, great growth and some years where it doesn't grow as much, and I guess having it in the market, any market, whether it's in the share market, whether it's in property, it's time in the market rather than timing the market. That's important. So when we go into option two, it's that if you were to actually take out the $20,000 and buy a $200,000 property. <laughs> now, I've gone here and calculated what it would look like at 4% growth, plus the cash flow you get. So. The initial deposit is not 20,000 because you're gonna use the 20,000 to leverage and purchase a property worth 200K. Now, in this circumstance, after 20 years, you would have paid off that property because it's cash flow positive. So the growth you would have in that property would be 238,225, which means the total asset value will be 438,000 225. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> it means that if you actually have the opportunity to get early access to your super, you may want to take it. Uh, again, this is non-financial advice and every situation, every circumstance, every client is different. So that's where I really urge you to link, you know, click in the link in the description below and book in a strategy session where we can actually have a bit more of an in-depth conversation about how this could really affect your lifestyle. Again, we use, you know, usually in this circumstance with the virus, we're using the $20,000 as emergency funds. But let's say six months from now, the virus is out, you've got a new job, it's paying well, and now you've taken the 20,000 out. Are you now reading into what everyone is saying about, hey, now you've taken the 20 out, you've actually lost a lot of money? Clearly in this example, you can see that you're actually gonna end up with a property that's worth $438,000. But what's more important here is if you ended up purchasing a property that had no growth, right? You just purely used the 20,000 to deposit into a property worth 200,000 and then just kept paying it down, principal and interest, you would actually end up with a property worth 200K and producing cash flow. Now, as I've been saying in all my videos, cash is not king, cash flow is actually king. So when we're looking at option one with leaving it in your super, 
well, yes, you're earning a higher percentage growth, but in fact, you're only basing that on $20,000. You're not leveraging that to you know, create more. And so your total earnings or total asset would be worth $122,000. So if we looked at like a pros and cons of this, you've got with buying property with that $20,000 versus leaving it in your super, you've got 8% of cash flow as a rental yield. And if you were to reinvest that 8% continuously, you'd pay that off anywhere from about 15 to 20 years, depending on how quickly your rentals go up. Now, any of the properties I'm looking at for myself or for my clients, vacancy rates are very important. For those who don't know what vacancy rate is, it's a good indicator of how in demand rental properties are in that area because there's a shortage. And if there's a shortage of anything, if there's a lack of supply and demand outstrips supply, we're really gonna get that price pressure up. So that's why across all my portfolio, I have the rents going up every year. Um, this year might be a little different with the virus, um, but on average, that's what we're looking for. So if you've got that cash flow coming in, in option one, if you were to take the $122,000 and go, okay, great. Now, what am I gonna do with it? You're probably gonna go and put it into more shares but that provides no cash flow. You're getting a really low dividend yield. It's not worth your time. So then your other option is you probably put it into the bank. Now the bank's giving you 1.8%. You, you're really looking at you know, option two where you've purchased a property worth 200K. It's giving you $16,000 as income and you're able to then leverage the equity growth in that property to access more property. So you could actually end up with three or four in the time that you would have thought, well, I'm gonna keep my 20,000 in my super and believe what everyone else on Facebook and you know these articles that are being written by creative journalists, as I like to call them, are saying. So really short video, just wanted to show you the two examples. And if you were to access the equity, um, well, super, and get that out as an emergency fund, but not actually really need it, well then an option to do that and use that to purchase property is actually a good one. And you can clearly see the numbers. And remember guys, cash is not king. You can't just hold onto that cash and hope you can retire. You need asset producing, in income producing assets um, rather. And that's really gonna come through with these recession proof properties as I like to call them and we're trying to buy them under market value. So guys, if you've enjoyed the different environment here, uh, let me know. I'm very keen to understand what you guys want in terms of new content as well. I'm here to help. And as always, if you haven't already, then please do subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video.